is Project Rock and Roll's maiden voyage on a rally track. If you missed it, you guys can click right here and check it out. We had an absolute blast ripping the car finally. And uh, it was great just to get some seat time and really feel it out. Our biggest challenge for the day was definitely traction. I mean, even having the welded diff and some pretty gnarly snow tires on the rear, the car was just very tail happy. It's a super light car and being rear wheel drive. So took us a few laps to really learn the car, feel out where the pivot points were and how it wanted to come around and catch itself. Uh, I do think that an angle kit might be in our future just to help with catching that back end as it comes around a little better. So we got another race to get ready for in about a week. Uh, and there's another channel, the G-Force Monkeys, that actually called Boost Rodeo out to have a little Corolla showdown. They have a TE72 as well, so uh, we're going to show them what's up. When we unloaded the car the other day, uh, we decided to rip it up and down the road a little bit. And uh, we noticed that when it was on dry pavement on the highway here, anything above a third gear pull, the clutch was slipping. Just what we needed, another problem with this car when we just got it back together. We're really hoping that it's not the actual clutch. When we had the motor out and everything, we inspected it pretty heavily, cleaned up the flywheel and the pressure plate, and it looked good enough to throw it back in. So we're gonna be looking at all the rest of the linkage today to see if it could be something else in the system that changed and is causing it to slip. It could also be that the bigger tires on dry pavement are just creating enough extra load in those higher gears that it's overcoming the clutch. I'm really hoping it's not because we gotta run this thing in a little over a week and there's bragging rights on the line now. Right here you can see the slave and the clutch fork and it feels really, really tight. Um, granted, not that you want a lot of play in that, but there's none. So that's a good sign. That might mean that we're gonna get lucky and if I adjust the pedal out, something just changed up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and shorten the rod on the master cylinder to see if that gives us enough slack to get this to jiggle a little bit. And we'll see if that improves our clutch hold at all. So to adjust the clutch linkage, you can see there's a little C-clip here, and then on the back side there's a locking nut. If you loosen that, you can pull the linkage off and thread it in or out on this rod to lengthen or shorten your clutch pedal engagement. All right, so I got the clutch pedal all adjusted. Um, I'm not too confident that that's actually the issue. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research and see if I can find anything else that's worth checking out. Back at it, after a couple days of research, the only explanations I could find for why fluid would not be releasing from the slave cylinder is if the clutch hose, sometimes when they get really old, they'll swell up and actually swell shut, or if they have a kink in them, um, they can hold some pressure back. The master cylinder creates a ton of pressure when you push down the clutch pedal, and that can be enough to force fluid through the hose in one direction, but sometimes just the pressure of the clutch itself is not enough to fully push the pressure in the opposite direction back through the hose. So that can be one explanation. The other one is there's a pressure port on the master cylinder. So when the piston moves back past that point, it's supposed to bleed the pressure back into the reservoir. Um, if that is plugged, that could be our issue as well. I went ahead and I just ordered a stainless clutch line for this. It has a rubber one right now, so I figured for the price, it's not worth screwing with and even worrying about. To test out the second thing, what we're gonna have to do is pull the master cylinder, drain it, and then probably shoot it with some carb cleaner and pressure through that port just to make sure there's nothing in there. So this is gonna be my, uh, this is gonna be my drain system in a pinch. Water bottle, little hole in it. We'll pop that over the bleeder. <laughs> This is some nasty looking fluid. So this really needed a flush anyways. <clears throat> when we get this all back together, I probably will give it an actual flush before putting new fluid in. Should be pretty straightforward. All we got is a fitting here and then I believe there's two bolts. Actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna wipe it out though because uh, more of that gunky brake fluid in there. The uh, seals and the piston all look pretty good and the spring, everything's working right in there. To disassemble in one of these is super easy. It's just this nut holds on the reservoir, threads into there. Pop that off, you can use a little compressed air. I was using it to blow it out mostly, but compressed air will also pop the cylinder out for you. And then uh, the boot just pops back on. I'm gonna go ahead and 
go ahead right now and I'm gonna wipe that down a little bit. We'll put it all back together and we'll get it back in the car and then reinstall it with the new clutch line when it shows up and hopefully that fixes our problem. Otherwise, I'm afraid that our clutch is smoked. All right, so the master's all back in. Um, I didn't see anything that I think could be causing the issues. So the braided clutch line should be here in a day or two. I don't have high hopes that that is gonna solve any issues, but if it does, awesome. I think we might be looking at either a smoked clutch or we just glazed it really bad so it's not holding like it should. Um, in either case, that really sucks. We've got another rally race, so we're gonna try and make it through that one and just hope that having a lack of traction for most of the time will not cause the clutch to slip. I think we're gonna end up dropping the transmission sooner or later to do that. Bummer. New clutch line showed up today, so let's get this thing installed and get her bled. So let's get it put in. Old race car. <clears throat> New clutch line is on. I uh, didn't bother showing you guys the install because it would have been a pain in the ass to hold the camera. And it's pretty dead simple. Literally got one fitting here going into the slave cylinder, one fitting here going into the clutch line, little C-clip to hold it here, and you're done. So now we are ready to bleed this thing. Oh, all right, so I think we've done all we can aside from changing the clutch, so nothing left to do except see if it holds. I'm exhausted, it's already super late, but uh, I got a lot left to do tonight because I think this car just needs a little something extra for the race tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work, but you guys can check out what that little something is. If you click right here, catch up with us on race day when we show G-Force Monkey what Project Rock and Roll has got. G-Force boys, you're going down, sketchy clutch and all. Yeah.